All right, in this video, I'll be showing you how to use splines with PCGs to continue my PCG tutorial playlist. And in here, you see I have two splines. One will be used as a path, another will be used as an info. As you see, the path is being used to create this kind of stone pathway, and the other is being used to create a forest. So obviously, if I select the points on the splines, I can go ahead and move them. You know, you could see that there is a shift and a change. Same thing with the path. If I click one point here, I can go ahead and I can change the path. And now this works on the hills as well. So if I was to go ahead and grab this and I was to just move it, you'll see that the path follows the hill because it's being projected to that data point. Obviously, you can use your imagination. Instead of uh, trees, you can put buildings. So I can go ahead and I can use this spline, disconnect the path, and then connect. And if I was to move the buildings here, they subtract from the forest. Those are the things we're going to be working on, just the ideas of how splines and PCGs work together. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, if you want to follow along with the trees I'm using, I'm using this Landscape Pro 2.0. You just add it to your project. This is in the Epix Game Marketplace under free, permanently free. Currently, it's all the way at the bottom of the first page, but it should be somewhere over here. Let's jump into Unreal Engine. All right, so once you open up Unreal Engine, you want to go ahead and create a new level with the open world or basic or just some sort of landscape that you create. If you don't know how to do that, there's plenty of videos online and on my channel that explain how to do that. First thing you want to do is to create a spline. You see, I have this modeling mode. Yours is probably at selection. And to create this modeling option, you need to go to edit plugins and type in modeling. And it's going to be this modeling tool editor mode and just click check and you will have to restart your Unreal Engine. So go ahead and do that. So once you have modeling, you can click draw splines. It's pretty simple. You just draw by holding left click, draw another point by holding left click. And if you hold down and left click, you can create like this Bezier curve. I'm gonna hold again here. If you wanna close it, you could just click loop up here and that closes it. Then be sure to click accept, All right? So that's our spline. You can click points and you can move them, right? There's another option to use blueprints to create splines, but I kind of just like to draw them like this. I think it's easier. So from here, you wanna go ahead and create a PCG folder. I have one right here. I'm just gonna create a new one just so you understand how to do that. Go to new folder, call it PCG2. Now in here, I'm going to right click and create a new PCG graph, PCG, go to PCG graph, you know, name this SP2 or SP1, I should say. And I'm going to drag this in. You'll notice that it has a bounding box and I'm going to purposefully move it away from the spline because I want to explain what happens with this if it's outside of the box data. Now to open this, you just double click it. You have input and output. We're just going to ignore those for now. And then you have information on the right. To get a brand new node, you just right click. And what we want is information about spline. We need to get spline data. So I'm just gonna type spline and you're gonna see you have your options. And so I'm just gonna get get spline data. Click it, you'll see that it has some information about it. The actor filter is to self. So it's looking for information about itself so I understand that. But we want information about the entire file basically the entire world, I should say. If you move it to all world actors, you'll have actor selection by tag. And to select that, we need a tag on the spline. So what we need to do is I'm gonna minimize this and we need to go to our spline actor. This one, spline actor three is this one right here. You can tell that we're moving it. So you have to search for a tag property. And so up in search, you can just type tag and you'll have it. It just filters out the tag. So just click the plus sign here and I'm gonna call this line one. So that's line one. That's all you need to do. Uh, I'm gonna move away. Let's go SP1, go back to this, make sure it's there. Okay, it's 100% there. And so now I'm gonna open up my graph again and an actor selection tag, you see that is tag right there. I'm gonna type line one. You need to type it exactly as it is, line one. And so now I'm gonna right click, type spline again. We need a sampler. So line sampler right there. Now just connect these by left clicking and dragging. You can disconnect it by holding alt. There you go. Now there's some information here on the right. So it's on spline. That's kind of the way it's understanding how it wants to use the spline information. We want interior at first because I want to fill it up with trees. So in here, I want to come down, select this unbound. Now before I turn on unbound, I want to click D on this spline sampler and that's going to give me a debug mode turned on and you'll notice that this kind of circle pops up or octagon or whatever you want to call that and you'll notice that there's nothing happening if i click unbound you'll notice it gets filled the reason that's happening is unbound is telling you that it's not limited to this boundary it's unbound to it be sure to turn on unbound and most likely you want to do that now the next thing we want is a static mesh spawner now, if you're familiar with the first video, this is like the same steps. We're just gonna connect that there. We'll debug it by pressing D. And coming here, and we want to go to mesh uh, entries, click plus one, index, scripters, static mesh right here. And you wanna select trees, just find your trees. I know I have some spine, uh, sorry, I have some pine trees. So I'm gonna click pine zero four. 
and you see it filled it up. It's super, super dense. I'm gonna pause here for a second with the dense trees. We can resolve that in a bit, but for the first half, I just wanna cover how to do the paths using spline. So we have a forest using spline. That was visually very clear. Now, the next thing we wanna do is take our spline actor minus spline actor three, and I'm just gonna go ahead and control D to duplicate it. I'm just gonna move it over here. So we have another spline. You'll see it's called spline actor four. You'll notice if I just move this over here that in information properties, we still are kind of selecting tag. So we wanna change the tag from line one to line two. Because remember, we wanna select this as an individual thing and we don't want it to be named line one. So if I go back to our first spline, which in my case, spline actor three, it's called line one. The second one is spline actor two. Moving on, we need to do the same thing, get spline data. So now we get spline data and we're gonna go ahead and move this from self to all world actors like we did previously and type spline two. Go ahead and right click and say spline sampler once again. Okay, and move that here. Now, instead of interior, we're gonna keep it on, on spline. We're gonna create a bound modifier to visualize what's going on here. Bound modifier. Okay, we're gonna select that. We're gonna turn this on by, uh, sorry, the debugger on, click D. And then in here, in the second number, basically this kind of uh, Y area, I believe is Y. We're gonna move this to 100 and 100. Basically it's creating 100 on both sides. And so now it's thicker, 100 on each side. And you'll notice that it's a mess, a complete mess. What we wanna do is go back to spline sampler. Okay, be sure to turn on bound. And then here you wanna go scroll up. And right now the mode is subdivision. You wanna change that to distance. Okay. And distance, I'm going to keep it to 100. Okay. And so what you start to see is it starts to kind of subdivide and you can see it's subdividing right here to create that curve. And then part of it is disappearing. I'll explain that disappearing part in a bit. But first I want to do aesthetic mesh spawner. And then I'm going to click this here, connect it, I mean, and then add a mesh. Mesh entries, index, descriptor. And I know I have some concrete curb and there it is. Now, if you want to follow along, just go to bridge, look up a concrete curb, and I'm using this kind of modular concrete. So what I'm going to end up doing is make these like pavers. And so to do that, I want to go ahead and right click transform points right here. Click this, deselect that by holding alt, connect it back into this. All right. And in here, we're going to go to scale min and max, unclick the lock icon. That's going to allow me to individually change this kind of X direction. So I'm going to change this to point two change this to point two. Okay, and it's uniformly still changing, even though this is one and one. I'm gonna lock these again. The reason for that is the uniform scales to turn on, turn off uniform scale, just by clicking there. And there you go. Now it's doing what it's supposed to. So these work well as pavers in my opinion, right? Um, obviously there's some issues where there's some intersecting. I'm not gonna resolve that. Now this situation where it's going into the ground, the reason for that is it's not projecting this spline onto the ground the way I want it to. So if I move it to that hill, it's just, it's not gonna show up at all because the spline will be under the ground like it is here. Technically this line is under the spline, so it's not generating. So how do we fix that? Now for both the trees and for the path, we wanna do this. So we wanna get landscape data. Uh, where is that? Right here, get landscape data. This is giving me information about the landscape, basically all the kind of points and stuff. And so what we wanna do is once we get that, you wanna type projection and that's gonna project the spline data onto the projection. So the N will be the spline, the landscape will be the projection target clean this up a little bit. There you go, that's cleaned up and I'm gonna connect projection to spline. Okay, so that fixed it. Now this is where it might start to break, but if I move this over here, notice that the spline broke, it detached itself. One thing you could do to resolve this is just make sure this box is fully covering this region. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make this much, much bigger. So once I scaled it up, you get this ridiculous weird looking error. Now all you need to do is just disconnect the static mesh spawner and then reselect back in and that should resolve it. Same thing here, this is still weird. So just deselect that and then reconnect it back in and then just move it and it should fix itself. Now this is moving along perfectly fine on this hill as projecting and without that projection right here, this would not work. This would just a little bit underground because you can see the spline is actually under the hill. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to show you how you subtract this from the trees. So let's go ahead and add something called, make this bigger, add something called difference and in this case before we get to the static mesh spawner deselect that so basically what you want to do is you want to grab information from the interior volume which is this that's being controlled by this spline sampler put it on to the source connect that to the static mesh spawner like that and then we are going to take the end of the static mesh spawner here which is the path and connect it to the difference and now if i come to blind actor 4 and i move it 
nothing happens. Now, the reason for that is because you have to still change something. Now, in difference, you have to go from minimum to binary. And once you do that, you'll notice that it's subtracting something, right? It's subtracting that path. So if I debug, turn off debug from here, you'll notice that it's this very dark path. Um, but it is cutting it. So how do you see it? Well, we need to change the density of this forest because it's absolutely ridiculous. In static mesh spawner, I did add a few more tree types. So you'll see I have pine four, pine five, pine two. That's pretty simple to do. Just add a new element. That doesn't solve our problem in terms of density. If you go to spine sampler, you'll notice that our interior sample spacing, this thing, if you increase it, it's basically going to make the subdivisions of the boxes larger and that's gonna reduce the density. So I move up to 200, you'll see that the density dropped. If I move this up to 400, it drops even more, okay? So really that's how you start controlling the density of it. I think that's fine for a forest. The path isn't very wide, but you could tell that, you know, it is doing something. 300, so it feels even denser. I reduce my speed so you can understand how that's working. Now we have a little path between our forests. Okay, kind of neat right? The other thing we need to do is show you how to make a, a town in it. Basically, it's the same thing as creating the forest, but instead of the forest, we're going to have buildings, okay? So it's basically the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and use this path, add a new blind sampler, connect it. So I'm going to turn on unbound, and then I'm going to move this from uh, spline to interior. And then here, I'm going to add a static mesh spawner. Now, if you follow along from my first video, you saw how I added these houses. Go ahead and add a house or any building that you have. So I'm just gonna go house four here and you'll notice it's super, super dense. Just go to spline sampler and probably move this down to, or move this up to like 400. Okay, and that reduces it. Just take this up to like 500, even further. So it's very, very uniform. So maybe you just wanna add a few more houses. Okay, so I added two more houses here and I'm just gonna change the weight of this. So the weight is gonna make it more common. So I'm gonna make it five, giving priority to house one and then house two, move that to, let's call it three. Move that actually to 10. And then we can do a transform point and then just, you know, change some rotation. Um, just so it's a bit more chaotic now. Um, maybe I create a video more about like how to create towns and stuff, but this is just like the basics of it. All you need to do is add this to the difference mode right here, or it's a difference node, I should say. And then you should be able to move this and this should be able to cut right through the forest. Okay. So simple as that. If I just connect the path, turn off the debugger, you will basically just see the town as chaotic as it is. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. If I did anything totally crazy or ridiculous or unorthodox, please let me know. I'd be happy to revisit and change some of this stuff, but this is kind of the simple raw way of doing it. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed and catch you in the next video.